How's it going, everybody? Dave Meltzer here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly here. We've got a lot of news to talk about. Uh, last night's wrestling and a lot of other stuff uh, that last night's wrestling probably brought up. And uh, Brian, how are you today? I'm doing good. Last night, uh, Brian, I, I wrote something to you, um, and I have later found out that it's entirely wrong. So I just want you to know that uh, this, which has to do with the, the sale of WCW. Um, what we saw last night, uh, I want to get this out of the way because the conclusion from watching that show that you would get, being that they're teasing new ownership, is that the deal must be done. And, and it may be, okay, but what happened on the show had absolutely nothing to do with anyone who would have known anything in that that show was written by Ed Ferrara, and that whole skit with the, with the owners and everything like that, that was just something that that uh, was written more or less to spoof Internet speculation, as opposed to actually from anyone who knew anything. Okay. And in fact, that, that whole show, in fact, was written by Ed Farrar and Eric Bischoff had almost, I, I think, m no influence at all on the show. I mean, maybe well, he may have had something through Johnny Ace. Well, I kind of think that if Eric was gone and not talking to anybody, I mean, my first thought was, you know, maybe Eric called them and said, look, do this angle where you say that the owners might arrive. And I thought if that were the case, why would they do that if the sale was not going to go through, if it was dead? And so the I sale assume... is not, no, I can, t I can tell you for sure the sale is not dead. Okay? Where it is, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably in the same place it's been for the last week or two. People are proceeding as if the sale is going to go through. Everyone's proceeding like that, but and it may even be a secret done deal. It's a possibility. I don't think it is. But but the idea that it's dead is for sure not true because, and one of the reasons I can say this is there's a fusion executive who, as soon as the, the thing happened, you know, whatever it was, like 60 days or 50 days ago, 50, you know, when, that, when the thing was first announced, he started working in the office. And he's still there every day reporting to fusion. So obviously if the deal was dead, he would be working on another project, right? Yeah, you'd think so. So, I mean, that's, that's the open and shut on that one. As far as where it stands, as, you know, anything else, um, I don't know who, who would really know. Um, and I don't know how close they are. And it's not that it, it may not fall apart. I mean, every, you know, everyone's still in the, same, in the same boat. Last night, I know when I was watching, I was going like, wow, you know, obviously the deal's closer to being done than, uh, than I thought. But, you know, I t talked to one person after another today. And, um, you know, the people who are, you know, no, no one knows anything, basically. Everyone's speculating. And that's the, the basic gist. As far as last night, I mean, there were people on the booking committee who had no idea about anything on, you know, March 26th being a done date, but there's no building book for April 2nd. I mean, I, this is basically lame duck week to week booking. And, you know, what they're going to do. I mean, Eric, I think Eric Bischoff knows the angle since, you know, he came up with it a long time ago. Whatever they're going to do. I really believe it'll probably be done on the 26th, um, but that timetable can change. Who knows? I wonder if we're going to look back on this and, in hindsight, find that the handling of this was even worse than it appears right now. Um, God. Well, it's a, it's this a complicated thing. This thing is so incompetent. How can you be selling a company or attempting to sell a company, not let any of the employees know well, you know why they don't let anybody know that has a job to do to keep this thing alive? Well, it's well, like well, having well, a person not... who's in the hospital and they're about to die, and they have like medication that they have to take, and uh, you're not telling any of the doctors what medication to give them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like something but, has to be but, done but, to keep this thing alive, and no one's saying anything. Well, but the thing is, the they don't. I don't even want to tell the employees because until it's done, you know, I mean, they're brought, they're going to fire so many of them, and I think that if you officially say. I don't know. Maybe they, they don't have to say that. But not okay. The Time Warner side, the TBS side, is doing nothing as far as anything after March 28th television. I think that's that's it for them. They're checking out. Um, what happens after that is, you know, who knows? Um, I mean, there are holds on buildings in April, but no tickets are on sale. No announcement has been made of cities. It, I mean. I think there's probably even a two or three more day leeway, maybe even a little, maybe even a few more days after that, uh, where they probably could get an April 2nd show. God, it's kind of pretty close though. I mean, they'd have to announce it like real fast. 
And I don't, I don't expect, I mean, no one expects that there's going to be anything run in April. May 6th, nobody knows. That's the answer. Nobody knows if there's a May 6th pay-per-view or not. Well, um, and, you know, the other stuff, you know, I mean, as far as if they shut down, how long, is it anybody's guess. And uh, anything else you want to add to that before we switch to WWF? No. Okay. I'm just I loved Raw last night. I just want to get that out of the way. Yeah, Raw I was just, awesome. I loved that show. I... Um, a lot of it, you know, this, you know, the funny is, a lot of the stuff I really loved was the Heyman stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not, and I'm not talking about his announcing, which also I thought was very good, uh, much better than last week. And he was good last week, but I thought he was, I enjoyed him, you know, about three quarters of the way. I wouldn't even say that, because it's halfway through the show. During the Benoit Guerrero match, I was going like, you know what? I like him more than, more than Waller. For the entire show or just that particular match? For the entire show, I would say I liked him a, more than Lawler, but for that match, a lot more. Just focusing more on the matches and getting the guys over. Just being really enthused. You know, you know, I mean, Heyman, Heyman has his agenda. I mean, I know the guy real well, but the thing is, is that his agenda is to push certain guys, which are the same guys that, that we want pushed. Because <laughs> <laughs> so it's like his agenda, like like I can tell from what he's saying, or who's. I mean, like obviously his project is Benoit. It goes without saying that Benoit is gonna finally get. A push. The only problem is, is that you know Heyman pushed him like you would push an ECW babyface, which didn't work in the WWF. Especially the <laughs> way that they had the whole under... thing set up, it's like working against him. They didn't understand that that made him a babyface because he was doing, um, you know, Clint Eastwood or whatever it was. They were just like, you know, he beat this guy up with a pipe, he attacked this guy from behind and threw him through a wall, and here comes Eddie Guerrero, you know, who's always been—I would say always been a babyface in L.A., but whatever. <laughs> it's like. Oh, so it was an awesome match, but the people, you know, did not get behind Benoit as a babyface. So they didn't get. It was like they were. They didn't know. They didn't understand. No, it's they like just WWF didn't know. knows that Benoit is supposed to be a babyface, but they've really done nothing to let the fans know that. It's just this guy. He doesn't like his other friends, and we're supposed to hate them all. So you know, I'm sitting there, and I knew that he was supposed to be the babyface. And as soon as he came out, in fact, as soon as he first started attacking the radicals. And I was listening to the crowd in the background, and it was like no reaction. And then he comes down the, to the ring, and everyone's just like, "Okay, here's Benoit. Okay, here's Guerrero. Now what?" And they had this great match, and nobody cared because nobody knew what to care about or who to care for. I think people knew they had a great match, they, but but as far as like, yeah, they didn't they didn't know who the babyface was. And it's also you also got to remember that it's it's L A. and L A. L A. is traditionally tough. It's gonna be yeah. tough tonight too. It's, it's in Anaheim. You know, it's like Nassau Coliseum. You really got to show them a lot. I mean, they they did really get into Rock and Kurt Angle though, which I thought was an I think awesome that was a better match. match. Okay, you did too. So did yeah. I. Yeah, I thought Rock and Angle was better than Ben Juan Guerrero because I can get emails, you know, people saying that Ben Juan Guerrero was the best TV match of the year, and I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. And I thought Rock and Angle was. I think it was just. I mean, I was watching uh, Ben Juan Guerrero, and it was so awesome. And then I got your email, and you were like, you know, I think the main event was even better. And I thought, yeah, okay, we'll see. And it was. I think a lot yeah. of it was just um, they were so into that match. They were so into everything. It was like Rock could make the most simple comeback with punches, and he would go insane. And some of those near falls were just awesome. And, oh, uh, yeah. Kurt yeah. Angle. And I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, Rock can have a good match with someone that's a good worker or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But uh, Rock is really good, and Kurt Angle is awesome. And... Uh, I don't care what you, you, you know the one thing, the one thing, and 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 of the three, Rock, Kurt Angle, and Helmsley, Helmsley probably is the best worker of the three, and Rock is probably the worst worker of those three. Okay, having said that, I would rather watch Rock and Kurt Angle because there's a certain chemistry those two have that that Rock really doesn't have with Helmsley, although he does have close to it, and that Angle definitely does not have with Helmsley. Helmsley and Angle matches are always good, but they are always when they're over. I always feel like. God, I just expect it to be a little bit better. That's the two. Whereas heel Rock thing. and Angle, when Rock and Angle wrestle, it's always like, wow, that's like, I expect it to be great, and it's even better than I expected. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, I think with like Angle and Hunter, it's the same thing that happened with Ben Juan Guerrero. It's two heels in there, and nobody really knows what to think of it. So they, they pop no, for like, no, no, they know, they know that they're like supposed that, to cheer. But... They know they're supposed to cheer Hunter, and it just, and, and they do cheer Hunter, but. But it's nothing just... like when it's like Rock in there. I, it's, it's, it's a question of two guys that are willing to sell for each other a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The finish was real good. 
I don't know if I would have done it that week, though. I, I, you know, it's like I, you know, rock tapping was a really gutsy thing to do, but it was the right thing to do in that it really got Angle over. They got Austin in there. Austin gave Rock the stunner. It was a really well done sequence. So I guess the end justifies the means. I just, to me, it was like, if I got Angle with the ankle lock on somebody, and, and it's the champion, and he taps, you know, and then you do the DQ, which which was cool because it it, it leaves it open ended and everything like that. It, I think it, it you know, I, it kind of, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to do that till after WrestleMania and then do it to set up Rock and Angle again. Mm-hmm. But I think it was I, okay I, this far out. I mean, you're, I, I guess. I mean, I, I mean, I thought the way that it all went down though was, God, it was just really good. Um, you know, Regal was really good. Shane McMahon run in was good. Thank God. <laughs> I was hope I was hoping I was gonna come in sooner. As soon as I saw Shane McMahon run in, I thought, Oh boy, we're coming up to WrestleMania. Here's Shane again. Here's Vince. Linda's gonna be uh, uh Oh here. Shane and Li- Shane and Linda against I Vince and Trish. Don't. And someone someone emailed me in fact this was on the feedback. Someone had this idea that it was like how about this for a six-man tag? They said something like no! Trish, Linda, and <laughs> Stephanie, and I was just like going, "Oh no, 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 no!" And then I saw this last night, and I thought, "I, I, I pray to God they don't kill well, the show with something that horrible." I think they'll do something. They'll do a tag. Oh or no! Come on! Can't they, they be put in the, in the corner? Somebody can. Can't we have four managers again and like a semi-main? Hey, hey! Why don't we have Why don't we have them in the corner of like you know Raven and Crash Holly? <laughs> hey, that's great. That's fine with me. I do not want to see Linda McMahon in the ring. <laughs> Or uh, Stephanie. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, imagine that. Yeah, let's see. They put uh, Albert in there with the uh, X-Pac and Justin Credible, so they're starting a little group there. Uh, what other stuff do they do on the show? I've uh, got the ratings here. 5-8 for... Um, not 5-8. Five, 5-8 eight. Five, eight for the main event. 5-0 for Raw, 2-1 for Nitro. So the numbers were roughly what they always are. Nitro main event did a 1-6, which is pretty bad. Nitro, uh, what do you think of Nitro. I was kind of distracted through part of Nitro because somebody called, but, um, I mean, overall, I didn't think it was a good show at all. There was something really strange about the show. It was like, I think, they were just, it was like the old WCW where they had this deal where, first they have the security camera footage, and um, then they had this weird thing where they're, they're watching a tape of the security camera footage, which is being filmed on a security camera, and just weird things like that, and... Um, the whole thing, hey, the uh, the new owners might show up. Show's over, no new owners. Um, Scott Steiner cutting this promo that made... I was still trying to figure out this promo, maybe you can help me here. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or what, but I swear Scott Steiner came out and, like, signed a match, which I don't even know why Scott Steiner's signing matches, but apparently he has power to now. And he, like, signed um, Page versus Rick Steiner. And I think it was supposed to be... Or no, Booker T. He signed Booker T versus Rick Steiner, is what he said. And then Booker T gets attacked by Lex Luger. And what happened in that promo? Was he supposed to sign Page versus Rick Steiner? Because then he immediately said that Page could not interfere. I don't know. That whole segment there just totally threw me off. And, uh, I mean, the matches, for the most part, weren't very good. There's something about Lance Storm and Mike Awesome teaming up together that absolutely does not work. It's like, separately, they're... Good, they're really good, but together, for some reason, they don't have good matches. And, um, I don't know. The whole thing was smooth and canyon. I, I, you know what? That that was a really well announced. Good idea. Very good idea, but not for canyon. I mean, not for smooth. Yeah. First of all, you know, I'm assuming that it ends up with uh, canyon and the cat and smooth interferes and cat goes over on the pay-per-view. That's just how I'm, I'm reading it. But it's like... Okay, you know, you, you know, I I really like the idea of this guy being beaten down and he keeps getting up, right? I, I like it, but it's like it's Harold Hogue. It's exactly. Like it, it was a, it was the, you know, the right angle with the wrong guy. Kind of like plus the whole thing so, they were doing with him trying to limp down to the ring and felt like he's injured and it was like the phoniest limping I ever saw. It took him forever to get down there. Hey, how'd you like that punch he threw on Disco? Oh my God, that whole thing but, was just a disaster. Well, the other one. Speaking of the right angle with the wrong guy, Stacy Keebler and Sean Stasiak. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, okay, I mean, I, I pretty much when she came out, I go, okay, they're going to put her with someone to give the rub, and that's good. I mean, I'm glad they're using her because she's got charisma, okay? You know, most of the women are a waste of space, okay? But 
Then it's, it's Sean Stasiak, who they have been pushing, and I'm just thinking, like, how long do they have to, do they go with this mentality of, he's tall and he's got a good body, therefore we push him, even though the crowd doesn't care and his work stinks and he's boring? You know, it's like, it's like sooner or later, I mean, granted, you know, sooner or later, it's like, shouldn't, like, those elements that he doesn't have, like, enter into the thing rather than he's tall? I mean... You know, why don't you just get some male models that are six foot four and lift weights? So I, mean, that. <laughs> I know because that's what they're gonna do next. They're gonna get those battle dome guys. My first thought when that segment was was finishing was like, uh, you know, she she is really doing nothing for him because it's him, but he's just killing her. You know what I mean? Killing, killing, no, only killing her potential. I don't think he can kill her because I think... Well, he's not going to kill her, but yeah, you know what I mean, the potential. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, he's killing her potential, no doubt. Yeah, and where... what does she add to him? Nothing. You could put the rock with him, and it would do nothing for him. <laughs> Seriously. Because he's... I don't know. He comes he's out be... there, he's got the pictures, nobody cares about it. I don't know. Of all the people. Well, that's... Go through. Uh, what else? Let me see. Livewire did an 07. Superstar did a 11. Heat did a 19. XFL, I don't know the TNN number, but I know it was. I got this printout of. Um, Maybe it was a zero. No, no, no. I got this printout of, of the uh, rating in every single age group, okay? For, for all the XFL stuff this weekend. Except it doesn't have the actual rating on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know that um, the NBC game did a 2 6. Uh, which makes it only the what, third or fourth lowest rate show in the history of primetime television uh, in the big four networks. The UPN, I think, did a 1-1, one, one, and the TNN game was down in every demographic from its 07 national, 09 cable rating from last week. So probably, you know, 08 and 06 is pretty darn close to what it is, but that could be slightly off. Overall, even though NBC was up in the cumulative demographics, I think they were down in, in almost every one, so they overall were down, but um, anyway, I don't know exactly how down at this moment. Okay, real quick before we go to a break, um, this is uh, the poll question, what number of wrestling or mixed martial arts pay-per-view shows would you be willing to buy in the course of a year? None, 17%, 1 to 10, 22%, 11 to 20, 12%, 21 or more, 3%, and as many as I think will be good. 45%. So I think, what does that say? There's a market if it's good. There's a market if people if people are going to want to like it, they're going to buy it. And, yeah, that's what it says. Uh, today's question, of course, has to do with last night's wrestling. They're not going to buy it just because it's there. And they're not going to buy necessarily more, uh, or, or, or they're not going to necessarily like, you know, like one of the things that like sometimes happens is, uh, what's the mentality? That, uh, because I, I would hear this, like, in, in the month when there's, like, a really big, one of the big, really big boxing shows, right? Yeah. And then the wrestling people would tell me, and I'm not, there's probably some casual thing where this is actually, there's there's something to it, but I never thought it was a big deal. But let's say, like, when Trinidad and Vargas, I think it was, they had a really big fight, did a lot of buys. And then, like, people are going, like, well, since Trinidad and Vargas took all the money away from the consumers, they're not going to buy wrestling pay-per-views that month. And to me, it was like, yeah, I, I, yeah that's, that's a great excuse, isn't it? That sounds like... um. Maybe the pay was four hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was like one of those old time promoter excuses, like you know the, the you know the circus came to town, so therefore they're not going to come to wrestling this month. That's like it's like having a restaurant going. Why open on Sunday? Because everyone's going to eat out Saturday night. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can spend thirty dollars eating out on a Saturday night. You're not going to have thirty dollars the next day if you're hungry. <laughs> it depends on the restaurant. That's true. I don't know. But anyway, um. Let's go through uh, Thunder last night. Um, I heard there was a couple of good stuff, good things early, and like usual. the rest of the show was pretty bad. Uh, let's see. Hey, by the way, remember you were talking about uh, David Nelson and how you would watch him, and you could tell by the way he was going to the ring if he was going to do a job? Oh, yeah. Lex Luger. Oh, same way. Absolutely. I mean, Lex Luger usually is horrible, but he's like... Utterly beyond horrible when he's going to do a job. Last night with Booker T, it felt like he was in there with somebody who couldn't work. He's in there with Booker T, and he was so bad. Yeah. There was something. What did, uh, well, we'll talk about that one later. We'll talk about XFL in just a second. Anyway, um, 
The good match is from what I was told, Ray Mysterio Jr. and Billy Kidman are beating three counts. So it's Ray Mysterio Jr. and Billy Kidman against Romeo and Elix Skipper as far as the Cruiserweight Tournament final on Sunday on the pay-per-view. Heard that that was a good match. Romeo and Skipper did a run-in afterwards. Just, you know. Um, then, uh, let's see, Jason Jett, which is the name that uh, the former EC Money, real name Jason Broyles, is using, pinned Alex Wright. And I heard that he was the star of the show last night. A uh, lot of innovative moves. Uh, him and Alex had a good match. And uh, anyway, I was told that, you know, very, real good. Not Jason J. <laughs> no. Sean Stasiak beat Reno. Heard that was horrible. Uh, Sean Stasiak, the, the Mecca of manhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Palumbo and O'Hare beat Luber and Bagwell in the elimination match. This was the match that was scheduled last week. They did the same deal that they were scheduling last week, which was that Palumbo gets pinned first, which leaves O'Hare with Luber and Bagwell, and then he pins them both. So I can just imagine the look on Luger's face walking in the ring. But, but Bagwell was the final one pinned. I heard this match was really bad. Shane Helms beat Kiwi. Heard that wasn't very good. Uh, Conan and Hugh Morris beat Disco and Mike Sanders. Heard that wasn't very good. And then Jarrett and Rick Steiner beat DDP and Dustin Rhodes. Flair does a run in, and then Dustin gets hit with a guitar by Jeff Jarrett. And I heard that wasn't good at all. And also, they started with, um, I don't know, maybe 2,700 people in the Knoxville Coliseum, and they ended with very, very few. Uh, I I do know that, that uh, Bischoff's idea, um, if he gets the company, is no more thunder after Nitro. Um, Good. You know, ta taping it separate. no more thunder for a while? No, there is no more thunder for a while. Well, I mean, I mean if they shut it down. Once the but, I mean, if they restart it, they're going to... Oh, you mean just, like, not even bring it back? Yeah, just, you know, they could do it eventually, but, I mean, why, why have... I don't know. I mean, I think that you should put... They, they need the television ad revealed, revenue. ...all your effort into maybe one show. Well, they need the television ad revenue. I mean, they need some money coming in. That's true. I mean, I mean, it, it works against you. I mean, that's the whole weird thing about television house shows and, and pay-per-view. that the best, the best method for probably business at the house shows and pay-per-view is to do limited television so it's not overexposed. But there's money in television advertising that's more guaranteed than the house show and pay-per-view, especially if you're WCW, where there's so little income yeah. in the house show and the pay-per-view business right now. And the television, you know, even even at a 2.0, there's you know there's advertising money coming in. So I'm just looking at it like, uh, you know, when when this war first started, it was like Nitro was one primetime show a week for one hour. And Raw was one primetime show a week for one hour too. Yeah, I mean, if if it were like if they were still owned by AOL, you know, and they had four hundred billion dollars or whatever, and the company was willing to let them experiment with some things, I would almost try and experiment and just go, okay, we're going to lose some ad revenue cutting down to one show a week, but maybe if we put all our effort in that one show and put on, you know, just great shows, maybe that'll help the buy rates, you know, and maybe that extra revenue will offset losing the ad time for the other shows. Well, there was a lot of people who thought when SmackDown started that that was going to end up being a negative for the WWF. And, and as far as Thunder, you know, a lot of people blame the decline of WCW on the introduction of Thunder because it overexposed the product. Now, to me... I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. Well, I, one thing from I the following... I just look at the angles around uh, the time that the thing really went down. I mean, at the beginning, course. Thunder didn't do bad at all until they made it in, you know... No, and you know what? And it wasn't, over, it, wasn't, it wasn't overexposure because Thunder was, Thunder was a great show for the first six months, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Until just the whole company went down. One thing that, that, you know, my feeling is, as far as um, television goes, is that really good television, I guess there's a such thing as overexposure of really good television, but, you know, like, obviously WWF doesn't have it right now because their pay-per-views and house shows are still strong. Um, but really bad television, um, it's probably better to have no television. very little of it. <laughs> I mean, very look, look at I mean, Heat. I mean, when Heat was like an A show before SmackDown, you know, Raw's numbers were great. Heat's numbers were great. I mean, if if they would have had the, I I don't know if the effort is the right way to put it, but if they would have had the ability to try to make that an A show, and Raw and SmackDown, I don't know what would have happened. But as soon as they, uh, as soon as that's they made it to like a B or a C show, it just died. Yeah, but that's too much. I I, I don't I don't think I don't think uh, that's that's you know that's. A third, a third live show a week, you know, like, not live, but live to tape type show a week. Yeah. You know, with, with wrestling. It's like, what can you do that you're not already doing on the other shows? Mm-hmm. Uh, quick XFL. 
What did you think when Ross did that little speech last night? I was very Or did you just fast forward? No, I listened to it. I actually listened to the whole thing because I was actually, the funny thing was I was fast forwarding, but then I saw Ross have that stern look on his face and he was, it was looking like he was uh, giving a lecture about something and I thought, what could Ross possibly be talking about? And it was the XFL and I listened to the whole thing and it was like, this is so pathetic. Like the ratings are really bad because people are writing bad things about it. And like fans writing into these people is going to help in the slice. All it's going to do is going to get fans writing, because you know at WWF, I shouldn't say all WWF fans, but when they get mad, they write some really nasty things to a lot of people. And all this is going to do is get a bunch of fans to write nasty letters to sports writers and piss them off. And like that's going to, like that's going to get these sport writers to cover it or be nice to it or whatever. And even if, even if every sports writer in the company, in the country went, hey, XFL's great, this thing's a huge success, it's not going to help. Now, here's the thing. He had a valid point in that if they're, you know, I mean, I mean, it depends on the newspaper, it depends on the size of the market, it depends on the interest. But the idea of just covering, list, listing the scores in the paper, the box scores, and things like that, as much as the XFL ratings are bad, there probably is as much interest in it as, say, you know, a lot of other sports. I mean, because a lot of other sports are doing the same kind of ratings, they're just not getting the promotional push that XFL is, and they're not flopping like that XFL is overall. But there are people that are in the buildings. I mean, in um, San Francisco, Orlando, and um, what's the other market that does well? Um, Vegas. Those three markets, I mean, they're legitimately drawing, you know, over over 20,000 people a game. In fact, over over 30 in San Francisco. And so, so it's not like it's, <clears throat> you know what I mean? I mean, there, there is something there to where they deserve some coverage. Now, at the same time, uh, the way that they, you know, to, to go on after, to, if you look at this whole thing with, this, with, with the media, and every time, any time you really group the media, the media at large, that's such garbage because the media doesn't all talk to each other, and they all don't get in this big room. You know, even Brian, Brian and I, we don't even before the show, nine times out of ten, ever even talk. Um, and, you know, I mean, whatever his opinion is, I mean, we think a lot alike, as it, as it turns out. But the point is, is like, you know, like, we all have different we don't conspire. opinions. We Nobody's sitting there going like, we hate all these media people going, we hate Vince McMahon. Now, there are media people who hate Vince McMahon for various reasons, okay? And, and part of it probably is because Vince McMahon, you know, hates, you know, hates them. When this thing started, you know, it was just like, you know, you know, I mean, he, you know, he was, he was insulting them from the very beginning. Uh, he was insulting the stock people from the very beginning, you know, um, because they said it wasn't going to work and it turned out they look more right than he does today. After the first week, he was insulting them again because, um, you know, you know, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter what you guys say. I got the ratings. Well, he only had them for one week, and then it turned out that a lot of people were right, you know. And and you know, he got a lot of bad pub. But then look at the look at the stuff he's done. You know, that thing, that thing Saturday. I mean, he was he's lucky that uh, he didn't get ripped more for that uh, that that halftime thing. Mm -hmm. But um, so then he comes on there. And he's going like, I want more coverage. I want more coverage. The same people that he's been insulting since day one. I mean, remember, you know, like Ross and Lawler. You know, what did they mean that thing they said about Rudy Marsky? I mean, you know, and, and then, then five weeks later he's like, Oh, how come you're not covering us more? Yeah. And you know, and Ross, you know, Ross did get a bum rap because he was because he was a wrestling announcer, absolutely. And there have been people who bent over backwards to find the the most insulting things they could say about the league. I think that there have been reporters who have been unfair. There have been reporters who have been totally fair as well. Um, I mean, they complained about Sports Illustrated. Some people there did. And Sports Illustrated story after the first week, which is the only one I think they've done, was a totally fair story, you know. Yeah. But because there was some negative and some positive, they complained because, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was so sad watching that thing. Anyway, any other wrestling news to get into before we start hitting emails? I think that's it. Okay. I want to quickly remind everyone that, uh, let's see, what is our schedule? Tomorrow we have Jeff Merrick. Thursday we're going to have um, Cody Monk of the Dallas Morning News, and Friday we're going to have Ken Shamrock. And then next week we've got Mike Mooneyham on Wednesday, Rico Constantino on Thursday, and Superstar Billy Graham on Friday. This is from Ryan Anderson who goes, Jeff Merrick made a good point. How come the RTC didn't censor the Trish Vince angles both last night and last week? Because they know who pays them. Uh, was Eddie Goldman right on today's show when he said the XFL has the same amount of viewers as the WWF? 
Al, did Eddie really say that? Al is not here. So, if or he feigned it. Okay. If Eddie said it, it's not true. If he didn't say it, then he wasn't wrong. But uh, XFL does not have anywhere close to the number of viewers as WWF. Not even close. Why would he say that? Uh, well, I don't know what he did. Could you please tell me uh, what you think would be the better pro wrestling school to go to? Ult Maybe he meant viewers at the live events. Per live event, they probably have more. 20,000 people in the building. Yeah, because they're playing in bigger stadiums, but they only play five games, you know, or, or was it five games by eight teams? I mean, they're not running 200 days. Al! Al, did, it, what, did Eddie say that the XFL had the same number of viewers as WWF? Uh, I believe he did. I uh, can find okay. out, though. Okay, well, he's wrong. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Could you tell me what would you think would be the better pro wrestling school to go to between Ultimate Pro Wrestling, OVW, and Les Thatcher? I would hesitate to even want to give a recommendation of those three. If I was you and you're, I would go to all of them, see what they're offering and see how it fits your needs and see the instructor you think that you would probably get along the best with. Um, and, and, and what fits your, what, you know, ultimate pro wrestling is basically, they're looking for guys that are, I don't want to say they're looking for, but what they have specialized in is guys who are, have good size and good bodies and kind of giving them a lot of polish, like interview interview stuff, some ring stuff, uh, to get them ready for WWF. OVW is also to get ready for WWF, but I think that they're more into the basics of wrestling, and Les Thatcher's would be also basics of wrestling. Um, again, I think it's the instructor that you get along with that fits your payment plan, the city that you want to live. I, I would hate to, I mean, again, I haven't been through any of those three schools. I know, obviously I know all three instructors, but I... I don't know. I don't know. You have any I thoughts mean, I on that? I think the thing is, as far as, like, the desire to get a developmental deal, it's really going to come down to your appearance and your connections and not who trained you or what you can even do. Yeah. Look at Prototype. Um, He'll admit it. He's hideous. But he's got a deal. He's got, he's got potential. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ben Moore, I thought Raw was the best in quite a while. Rock and Angle was pay-per-view quality. I was wondering what they have planned for Angle. Uh, I don't know if this is locked up right now at this moment. Um, I Didn't he official, attack but... Kane last night? No, that was um, Big Show who attacked Kane. Oh, my God, that's even worse. No, Big Show and Kane, I think the Big Show and Kane are, are going to be wrestling at WrestleMania for the hardcore title. <laughs> no, but, hey, I'd rather that than Big Show's wrestling Kurt Angle or Kane's wrestling Kurt Angle. That's true. Kurt Angle looks like he's going to go with the, the idea... Among the ideas that was was batted around was Kurt Angle going with Benoit. What the hell? You know, obviously going match. with yeah, it's a great match. Jericho's going with Regal. That should be really good. Rock and Austin. I mean, that's going to be really good. Helmsley and Undertaker. You know, I, I think that'll be a good match. Not not necessarily a great match. Uh, let's see. I was you know, going back last to training, week. I just want to make one more comment. Sure. It really it really is about your appearance and um, and who you know because I mean, just look at. David Flair, he's the son of Ric Flair. He did get in because he was his kid and everything like that, but he's he's he was back in uh, NWA Wildside. I mean, you could be trained by Ric Flair, and if you're skinny and you have nothing going for you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You could say, I was trained by Ric Flair for uh, 15 years, uh, started training when I was 10, I'm 25 now, and they'll just say, okay, great. So much of it's cosmetic, and more now than ever. Yeah. And I mean, if uh, there happens to be just one company in about uh, three or four weeks, more. It's going to be even more important. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, there's that mentality when you walk through the door. Uh, I mean, and, and, and Stasiak's the perfect example. You know, Stasiak, he's going he's to end up being like Luger. Not, not quite all the way like Luger, because Luger, Luger had that body, and, and it was the right time, and everything, timing was good. But, I mean, I just get this feeling Stasiak's going to be some guy who's going to make this career over the fact that he's tall and has a good body, and he'll never amount to anything. <laughs> Maybe he will, and we'll all look stupid, but... Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, just look at like um, look at Stasiak and look at Jamie Noble and look at where they're at and where they will always be at. Yeah, I mean Jamie Noble. I feel I feel you know people always actually I can't even say that anymore. But we used to always get people to say you know you want WCW to die, you're biased, blah 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 blah. I feel so bad for these awesome guys like Jamie Noble and um, Yang and Shannon Moore and Shane Helms and all those guys. If WCW dies, those guys are rude, because they aren't yep. going to get a chance in WWF because of the size. 
And they're not going to make any, they're not going to be stars on the independent scene either because they're not gimmick oriented enough. Independent yeah. stars, you know, are the guys that have been on, have, have had WWF TV and have had pushes or someone like, I think Sandman, you know, um, because of the cigarette smoking and everything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he kind of has that gimmick ring entrance, so it's something for, not that it's a big deal, but it's, it's something. Shannon Moore's not going to have that. No. Uh, this is from SK from Manhattan goes, not sure if you're into wrestling video games, but Fire Pro D was just released for Dreamcast. The game is the ultimate game for hardcore wrestling fans. It has over 200 characters, all based on real pro wrestlers or UFC fighters. Ken Shamrock, Igor of Chanchin, Sakuraba, Fujita, Karo Uno, Big Daddy. Oh, that's Gary Goodrich. Alexander Karelin is in it. I wonder if he's getting rights fees. Andy Hoog, Hickson Gracie, Hoist Gracie, Funaki, Ruman Asato, and Alexander Otsuka are a few of the fighters in the game. There's an endless array of options, inter-federation battle royals, barbed wire matches, Electrical explosive steel cage matches. There's an octagon with no holds barred rules and referee stoppages. So we could like put like uh, Alexander Karelin in an electrified barbed wire match with Caro Uno, who's like one third his size. <laughs> <laughs> Another great feature is the criticals. This is when you deliver a crucial blow to your opponent in the form of a submission or a big strike. I used Sock, Sakuraba, and got Hoist in a critical triangle. The best part of the game is the detail. Each character looks and fights like their real-life counterpart. Hogan has a Hulkamania uniform, is slow, and relies on leg drops and a big boot. The Rock does the people's elbow. Flair says, woo. The game is in Japanese, but FightingSpirit.com is full. Translation guys and all the What's in Japanese? The, the game. Oh, I thought said the woo was in Japanese. <laughs> God. Rick Flair and Andy Hoog. That is just too In a bar bizarre. wire match. In a bar <laughs> That is too bizarre. Uh, for this world. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you know if Kid Cash wrestled? Yeah, Kid Cash wrestled um, George Hines. And actually, I heard George Hines did better than Kid Cash. Hmm. Uh, but I heard they had a good match. You know who else was there? Did you hear that Bart Gunn was there? Or Mike no. Barton, whatever. Yeah, he was there. He was just, he didn't wrestle. I mean, he didn't appear in front of the crowd. He was just, he was just back there. And he was just sitting there. And he was introduced like he was, you know, it wasn't like he was just a wrestler dropping in. I mean, he doesn't live in Knoxville anyway. Yeah. It was just like, he's Bart Gunn, and he's, there he is. He's, you know, I don't know what, what his role is. Uh, let's see. Did anyone think Eddie Guerrero looked unconscious after those three German suplexes? Also, why did people like Benoit try to dive through the ropes, um, and he missed? How many people die or get paralyzed from this move, will get die or get paralyzed from this move before people realize that people don't pop for it? Oh, the missed, I didn't like that missed dive spot. That looked just too, too much like it hurt. Yeah. Way too much to fall. Um, see, Miss Dive. There was a guy in '79 at Arena Mexico who I think missed a tope and died. Uh, I forgot his name. Someone will probably, I'm sure someone will email it in. It was very famous, actually. And then I remember a guy who missed a tope and, um, and was paralyzed in Mexico. It's a lot of topes. And then, um, I don't know if Parada Morgan really lost his eye on one. I would have always heard that story, too. I don't know. Uh, it says, Miss Hancock's career is over. Stasiak is the worst. He's worse than the Big Show and Billy Gunn combined. Uh, uh -huh. let's see. <laughs> uh, who do you think Helmsley has good match chemistry with? Um, Chris Jericho, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> they always have great matches. I mean, he is very good with Brock, you know, even, the, and, uh, hey, Austin. Austin, you know? yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what do you consider to be the biggest weakness in his repertoire? Um, he, he, I, I would say, I would say that he doesn't sell like a heel should sell for a top baby face. Not that he doesn't sell, that he doesn't put them over like, like a, a top heel should for a baby face. Mm -hmm. If I would just pick one weakness. If you could have any superstar on the WF on your show, who would it be and why? Um, I don't know, pick one. Vince. Yeah, it'd be the most entertaining. It'd be... Um, we've had Foley. I wouldn't mind Foley. Um, Angle again. Angle. Uh, Christian and Edge, if I could get them together. Steve Regal. Yeah. Steve Regal might have been the best of all of them that we had. Uh -huh. Eddie was good. They were all uh, when we had them. They were, they were all really good. Regal, Regal may have been the Regal may have been the best though, of all the WBF guys that we had. Which I don't know. Angle was really good too though. Edge Christian, yeah, they were all good. 
Uh, I think the best way to get Ben Walvers a babyface would have him save Austin from a beatdown from the Radicals after an Austin Eddie match. It's an idea. Uh, if they have the McMahon's tag at WrestleMania, wouldn't it be Stephanie and Vince against Shane and Trish? Shane? No, 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 no. Not. That's better than Shane and Linda. Um, much better. What's the current plan for Angle at WrestleMania? We'll probably find out tonight. Um, again, it, one of the, it was, the Benoit thing was talked about. From yeah, Brian how Costello. did you like that? Uh, it's pretty much a backdrop driver. Eddie Guerrero gave Benoit last night. Um, this back suplex? Yeah. Right yeah. on his head. There was a move. Now, what was the move last night that I got really scared? Yun Yang. That pile driver deal he did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I was it was awesome. What, yeah. Because I was sad to hear about the passing of Morton Downey Jr. Um, yeah, I, I heard that this morning. It was sad. Um, where, where everyone would want to talk about the WrestleMania Piper nonsense. Yeah, that was like one of the worst things in the history of wrestling was that Morton Downey Roddy Piper thing at that WrestleMania. So, the skit that went on forever and, you know, I think, wasn't Brother Love in that one too? I don't even remember. Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. I was wondering if you could shed some light on one of his shows. I remember the show where he had Jim Wilson, Thunderbolt Patterson, Dave Schultz, and Lou Albano discuss whether wrestling was real or not. Oh, God, I remember. That sh I was invited on that show. And um, and you didn't show up. No, there was some like reason. That. It was it was like a scheduling conflict. I didn't know who the other people were, and believe me, if I had known, good lord, but David Schultz and Lou Albano, there's no way. There's no way. Anyway, all I remember is David Schultz repeatedly calling Big Jim a damn liar. You damn liar, boy, throwing water in his face, and Lou Albano acting stupid like he couldn't understand English or anything. <laughs> if you could refresh our memories and share any cool stories about this episode and any fallout that occurred. I remember it was one of the very first times I saw a wrestler break kayfabe. I was also very surprised to see Thunderbolt reappear in WCW in 1990 as the Steiner Brothers manager. Yeah, that was some racial thing. They were trying to quiet Thunderbolt up like they always did. Whenever Thunderbolt complained about racism, they gave him a job, and then he stopped complaining. Um, and Bobby Walker, I think, is like, it's not, I don't know if this is real nephew or, you know, hard work Bobby Walker, but same same situation, I think. Yeah, that was, um, I just remember, um, this, this was a long, long time ago, and they had these guys on with wrestling was real or fake, and Jim Wilson was saying that it was fake, and then David Schultz came on there, and, you know, was just furious at him. And David Schultz, when he's mad, is a very intimidating, violent. scaring, violent guy. He threw water in his face, and I think they, Jim Wilson just kind of stood there, and, like, I mean, he actually, I think he actually handled himself pretty good under the circumstances. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, so. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is from Scott Warden. He says, I'm putting my name on this email because it's about Mushnick. Anyway, about Mushnick. If he didn't say that Vince was responsible, you guys should have trashed the emails that said he did. Why give him the space on your website? I did not read the article because I don't read him. I stopped when he wrote that crap in TV Guide that Saturday Night Live was looking for smut when they put Rock the host. Yeah, that was definitely one of Mushnick's bad columns. The guy needs a life. When he writes about sports, nobody reads it. Is that why he won just won the award for Sports Writer of the Year? He loses heat, so he attacks wrestling, knowing there's enough of them to get his name back out there. Uh, he, that, oh, God, he just blew the point with that one. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, about Angle and Shamrock at WrestleMania. Oh, God, not again. You know, I think you could win Sports Writer of the Year without having anybody read what you write. Just like some of those Oscars go to movies that nobody went to. <laughs> I know. Uh, let's see. Um, Jer Jeff American, as Raw reports, said the Jericho match was only used to get a mid-card angle over RTC. Maybe I'm wrong, but wasn't it also getting the Y2J Regal angle over? Yeah, a little because Regal screwed him, yeah. Yeah, it was. Which is still kind of a high mid-card angle. You know, the angle. funniest part of that match was, is Jericho's trying to work four men unsuccessfully, I might add. And, uh, there's this part where Goodfather, Bull Buchanan, and I think, uh, Steven are just giving him these most horrible stomps you ever saw in the corner. And right then they cut to backstage, and there's Steve Regal, who signed this match and is supposed to be the mastermind. And he, like, puts his head down in shame, like, this match is hideous. <laughs> and then they immediately cut away again, and I thought that was perfect. That was perfect. Yeah. Let's go to John. John, you're first up. Hello. Hey, how hey. are you? Hey, how are you? Dave, this is John Sapol, but I've actually been writing you about my interest in becoming a wrestling journalist. Right. You wrote the thing on the website uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, for the Smarts and Marks. Yeah. And I got another one coming for you tonight. But uh, anyways, my question is about the uh, Cruiserweight Tag Team Tournament. Um, 
I can't, I'm surprised at how poorly booked this was from the beginning, and I feel that... Why, uh, Why are you surprised? <laughs> well, I mean, the concept was phenomenal. I mean, I know it's WCW, but I thought the concept of bringing in the Cruiserweight Tag Division would be great, and they'd have, you know, uh, teams from all over the world and representation from Japan and everything. Imagine but, uh, that. <laughs> Young Dragons. Well, Young Dragons, but uh, what surprises me the most is that... Uh, over the course of the past year, we've seen the Young Dragons, Three Count, uh, Noble and Courageous, or any combination of the six, on pay-per-views and on television every week, putting on these phenomenal performances. And come time for this tournament, they're all out in the second round, you know. And now we're looking at Kidman and Ray versus uh, Elix Skipper and Kid Romeo. And it just seems to me that what message does this show? Because these guys who, you know, pour their hearts into their matches are, get, are not getting rewarded when the championship belt is coming into fruition, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah, but, you know... Um, I don't mind these finals, though. Yeah, no, no, because Ray, Ray and Kidman were still the only ones in that tournament that people perceive as stars. And, um, I mean, Romeo's... Romeo, I, he's got something there. They may blow it with him, but, you know... Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind that aspect of it, but I think that when they wanted to introduce it, they should have had a lot more planning to it and had... More they should have waited teams. until they could sign some guys and bring some new guys in. Right. You know what? They should I mean, have been talking about, man, I'm going to go to Ultimo Drive. I'm going to get some guys from Tori Yuma on. I'm going to talk to New Japan. But let's do the Cruiserweight t title tournament before I get any of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would have uh, liked to have seen it better if uh, the Dragons went over Skipper and Romeo last night, and then it was the finals with the Dragons versus uh, Ray and Kidman with the Dragons going over to transfer that star power to them. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have anything against that either. I, I mean, either way, it's it's what it's what you do with it. It's what you do with it after. But um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. You know, the dragons have worked really, really hard. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had a problem. It's it's you know, it's not really a matter to me in in this cruiserweight thing at this point. Um, in that in that match and in a lot of the matches, who wins and loses, provided that they work hard and it's put over good and they don't give up on it because the crowd didn't instantaneously take to it because it's going to take a while to get the crowd into it because. You know, let's face it, the people have been told for so long, like with Three Count and those guys, yeah, they had great matches for almost a year and, and a real good pay-per-view matches at the end of the year and everything like that. But at the same time, after every one of those matches, they were never put over. The fact those matches were good was never put over, and then every time they wrestled anyone outside of themselves, they always got squashed. So they're not over, you know? And do you think that uh, the fact that Steiner squashed, what was it, four or six of them, uh, a couple weeks help. ago, do you think that's still her in the division, or do you think it's pretty much been forgotten? It's not that it's been remembered, or but I think stigma-wise, it certainly didn't help. And there's been nothing that's changed. There's been nothing that's changed the, the the mindset of a fan that this is important, you know, since then. Other than that, they're, you know, it seems like it's a jobber tournament to a lot of people, unfortunately, by their reactions. Even even though like. On most of these shows, they're the best match on the show. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think uh, Easy Money, or what are they calling him, Jason O or Jason B? Jason Jett now. Jason, Jason Jett. Jett. I think he looked phenomenal in his tag team match uh, on Thunder a couple of weeks ago. But uh, him and Johnny Swinger, they don't really have the cruiserweight look about him. You know what I mean? Well, look, last, night, last night they put him with um, Alex Wright, and they put him over Alex Wright, and I think that the feeling was is that he shouldn't be in the cruiserweight division, but he could work with the cruiserweights. Um, yeah. I think that was the mentality coming out of watching that match, but he favorably impressed everyone. Yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal worker. But, yeah, uh, very innovative, so that's cool. All right, I'll let you get to some more callers. Thanks for you know, fielding my question. Brian, anything big as far as uh, figure four goes? Any stories you're working on? I'm behind. I'm way behind, but uh, lots of stuff on uh, WCW, hopefully. And I don't even yeah. know what else is in there this week. We'll plug I'll it be writing. I'll be writing some WCW stuff, but i still got to make a million more phone calls to find out what's... <laughs> I'm going to go, nobody really knows what's going on. I mean, <laughs> literally nobody knows. Oh, God. we got Steve Prezak on the line. Steve, how you doing? Hey, Dave. How are you holding up? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Groovy, yeah. Just wanted to uh, give you an update here on uh, uh, wrestling in Georgia. Seems to have really dodged the bullet this uh, past week. There was a bill that was, uh, actually passed the House that would, would sensibly would regulate all professional wrestling in Georgia, which would affect it really it actually would get killed the independent wrestling scene here, without a doubt, since it would cost uh, two hundred fifty dollars for, for for every for every card that was put on. 
uh, plus $250 annual licensing for wrestlers, referees, plus commission would have jurisdiction over every professional wrestling match, and uh, whether it's, uh, it's being filmed in the state and ultimately broadcast in the state. So in other words, it would pretty much kill, kill independent wrestling entirely in Georgia, and I'm sure that uh, Vince and whoever's running WCW wouldn't be too delighted about having a, a commission having jurisdiction over their matches for, for their television shows. So, But anyway, the fact it was, uh, it was the, the, the wrestling portion of this bill, which was tied together with some sort of legalizing of ticket scalping agencies, I'm not quite sure how the two tie together, but apparently the wrestling act portion of it has been pulled from the bill, so, uh, so wrestling has managed to, to dodge the bullet, as I said, uh, the, rather the, um, uh, you know, the um, having... Um, being regulated. Yeah, being regulated. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. The the I saw an article in the in the Macon paper a couple yeah. of days ago. It was really kind of funny um, <laughs> because it was like I guess the idea of regulation came from the boxing commission because mm-hmm. they had heard rumors that people get injured doing wrestling, which in fact they do. <laughs> it was just funny. They're going like, we've heard it's a rumor. Sometimes. Yeah. I, I actually I actually have this in front of me. I was gonna like. It's unconfirmed. The unconfirmed stories that guys get hurt doing wrestling, but it was just like, just like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. If I Actually, I, I think the story behind it all is that the boxing commission in Georgia uh, is is not particularly a well-funded one because there's not many boxing events that take place in Georgia. And uh, the perception that, well, wrestling is really popular, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, so uh, maybe we could glean a lot of bucks from these wrestling events and parlay it into the so-called boxing commission and, uh, fund, and fund this agency and and apparently that fell, I fell down all the, and it, all because of, all because producer of a letter writing campaign that, uh, the writer of this bill who was, I think, uh, Representative Alan Powell of, uh, the county of Hartwell, Georgia, who wrote it and apparently turned out to be a wrestling fan and decided just to pull the wrestling thing from entirely, but, but Bill Barons and Dusty Rhodes and myself and, and Tim Dix and a number of guys from both Turnbuckle and Wildside just, uh, did this massive letter writing fax, faxing campaign and, and, and rattled, rattled some cages and, and now uh, wrestling is, is safe for another few more weeks. <laughs> yeah, I saw the the thing with the, the, the I, I could see where the two hundred fifty dollars a show would really like. I don't I don't know that like it really would be a big deal to the to the WCW or the WWF, but I mean that's the kind of stuff. You know the the whole problem with the with the with the whole regulation thing is is that uh, I don't know. It, it's like the the regulation. The way the wrestling is set up, it's not fair. Because it's impossible to have fair regulation. Yeah. I mean, the, the Jersey stuff is the worst ever, because the Jersey stuff targets just a certain group of things and then exempts other people, and it exempts it, it exempts the big guys. Um, it, 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 like, it's mad at the small guys or the hardcore groups. And I mean, I'm not the, the biggest fan of the hardcore groups, but it's got to be fair. Um, but the one, the one in, in Jersey where... They go after the hardcore groups because they say it's like a bad influence for young kids. And I'm just thinking that, like, you know, I mean, out of a crowd of, you know, 200 people that these groups draw or 300 people, how many young kids are there compared to the millions that watch WWF? And they're exempted, and they can do any of those things that these other groups are banned from doing just because they're WWF. And it's like, you know, whatever the rules are, they need to be enforced uniformly. And then, Well, you know, I think the, the, part of the thing is that there's such a big difference between the major leagues and the minor leagues. I mean, it's huge. So two hundred dollars, it would mean absolutely, literally nothing to the WWF. Could kill a minor league show. Sure, when if you're doing like let's let's just say your your whole gates eight hundred dollars, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean there's your there's your yeah yeah it makes it. Um, it it's it's man, it's just tough. Oh, it's tough. It's just, and I, actually, I think the, the thing that that kind of would have bothered the WWF and WCW particularly, there was a uh, clause in here saying that the commission shall have jurisdiction over every pro wrestling match, contest, or exhibition of wrestling which occurs or is held within the state, is filmed in the state, or is broadcast or transmitted from the state. So I don't think that they would have a... uh, WCW and WWF would have been affected if they would ever have attempted to do something from, from the state of Georgia, but not in Monday now it's all for naught, happily. Yeah, I don't think that that would really matter because in like 20, 22 states that they're in, they have that same provision. Oh, do they really? You know, I mean, wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Mo- I mean, um, about just a, l- a little under half the states have that same thing, and they don't. The only state that they avoid is Oregon, and that's because of drug testing. That's yeah, not because yeah. of um, any other thing. I mean, but yeah, you know, it, 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 yeah, of course, it's a big deal as far as like uh, smaller, smaller companies. But I mean, I know here, just as an example, I mean, for years, you know, we up until I don't know, it was a couple of years ago, and I, I mean, I don't even know what the exact 
God, I don't know what the exact stuff is right now, but California regulated wrestling. But there were tons of independents that went on that theoretically, you know, should have been taxed and all that like that. And it was just, they just went on and nobody knew about it. And then like every three years, there'd be a promotional war. And one promoter would think on the other one that they run three years worth of shows and never pay taxes. And then the athletic commission would want like $10,000 and it was, then they'd have to shut down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was, it, it just turned into like, you know, this, politi this political nastiness. I'm not, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it other than, um, yeah, I know. I, I when I read the thing, I think that the Brian, how much does it cost like for you to get read for for uh, Oregon and Washington as far as like licensing? For me to get licensed in Washington, I think it's a fifteen dollar um, license fee, and then whatever it would cost for just the most basic physical, like to make sure I'm not going to um, die. But uh, for Oregon, it's uh, I think fifteen bucks, and I have to get a regular physical, and then I have to get um, I think hepatitis B and HIV. So, you know, those run, you know, maybe $100, $150. So that's it. Okay. That's just, yeah, because there are states like that. And they, I mean, they have independent wrestling in Oregon and, and, and obviously a lot in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So. Okay, thank you much, guys. Okay, you're very welcome, Steve. Talk to you later. All right. Uh, let's go to, is it Dan in Hawaii? Wes. Wes, what's going on? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. It's going really good. Uh, I guess the one thing after watching Stasiak and Stacy, we can all sit back and look forward to the upcoming program between him and David Flair. I know that's got. I, I I don't know that they're going to do that because I was I was waiting for David Flair to do a run in and then to mention his name and it never came up. Yeah. So oh. they may not they may not be going in that direction and just dropping. Let's David. hope. Somebody <laughs> wrote me this email now that you bring this up and it said, "Poor Trish and now poor Miss Hancock. They're both having to pay for the XFL." <laughs> I think the one problem with the cruiserweight division, though, I mean, granted, they're not really putting it over either, but, I mean, there's really, they've never, going back even to 96 and 97, they never really had any storylines, and they, you know, they never really gave the guys a lot of interview time either. And, they, you know, when there's not storylines anymore, people really don't get into it as one of the reasons, the ratings. I mean, you can put on a great match, but, you know, people seems like now, you know, they want some, you know, something behind the match as well, wouldn't you say? They want, st they want star power, and you got to make them, Stars and and a lot of that has to do with star power has to do with a lot of interview time and um and story you know some storyline too yeah they did some storyline stuff like Jericho did with Malenko and things like that and they did give them interview time and and when they did you know it was kind of over mid card stuff yeah so they sometimes they sometimes did um but yeah now with these guys God I don't know I, would those guys ever do interviews hardly I mean I remember. But then again, I remember when um, they tried with Jamie Noble and Evan Courageous, and it was just assumed they didn't do interviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the material they had to work with, though. It's like oh, yeah, it's like I dated your sister or something. <laughs> they, they could definitely use a manager that they could speak to, I guess, for him. But Also, uh, is Heyman signed yet with the WWF, or do you think he's still holding out hope that WCW might go out of business and something might pop up? Uh, he's not holding up any hope for that. I mean, I don't know that he's actually signed the piece of paper yet, but... Uh, they wouldn't be putting him on TV if they weren't pretty darn sure he's he's with them for for, for life. Yeah. Also, too, uh, the WWF stock. I don't know what it's been at today, but I know yesterday it ended up at eleven dollars and ninety three cents. That's that's got to be like one of the lowest I've seen in in a while. Do you think maybe though, it, if there is any good news out of that, is that the people are dumping off now before the XFL Titanic goes? You know, while there's still a little. <laughs> Before they go underwater, or well, well I, I, obviously, you know, most of this is aside from the fact that the stock market's just going down in general for everybody. Is you know, they're being hurt real bad by the XFL, you know, and and um, everything you know, didn't get you, hammered yesterday, though. Well, yeah, they didn't get hammered as much as most things, I think. Yeah, there were, wasn't talking. the market. What was the market down like? What what percentage yesterday? I, I can't remember know. the exact percentage, but it was low. Actually, yeah, but it was I mean, up two cents. I think uh, the WWF stock was <laughs> actually, but was it? Yeah. So and WWF didn't get hammered like everybody else. Yeah. Like, to it's the value the buy of, now. What? Buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> it is undervalued because it is a profitable company. Yeah. And and when they dump this XFL, it'll be a hell of a lot more profitable. <laughs> if yeah. if and when. Well, they're going to. It's just a question of when. Not not. There's not an if. It's a when. Also, are there any plans in the works for all Japan developing another opponent for Kawada besides Tenru? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I know they got they can bring in some of the new Japan guys. They're gonna have to bring in some. They're gonna have to bring in some other guys to draw because none of the guys that they got now 
I mean, maybe they could get one match out of Williams, but um, you know, those other guys. I mean, the fact that Bart Gunn was backstage tells me that he's that he he's looking at getting out. That's doesn't that isn't that what it says? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I, and my last question was in terms of when you and Les were talking of Friday, Buddy Lando, uh, was there what was the point of him developing that whole Nature Boy character? Considering I mean, when he did that, I mean, Flair was already a pretty big star. And was there any heat between him and Flair? I've heard rumors that there was over that. I, I don't know, but I know that, you know, I mean, it was a natural program in the Carolinas, and, and I think they got like one or two matches in, and they drew very well. And then Landell went and, you know, basically did too much coke and, and got fired. Right, you know, right in the, you know, right before they ever got the program really going. But he had used the name, I mean, I remember when Buddy Landell first started as a dark haired guy, and then he bleached his hair blonde, and he became Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Um, I'm trying to think what territory, I forget what territory that was, but it was before, well before the, he ever went to the Carolinas. And then he came to the Carolinas with that same gimmick as kind of like, um, you know, like this this cheap knockoff of Ric Flair, but it, it actually drew a lot of heat because you know Ric Flair was the legend, and here's this you know guy that was you know a cheap knockoff of Ric Flair is 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 good for heat, you know. Yeah. So, but I don't know as far as Ric, I never heard of Ric Flair being mad about it, but you know who knows? I, I can't say for sure he wasn't. But it seems to me though, I mean, cause he, I mean, he was a pretty solid worker. That you know, after that, he should have probably dropped the character because that was kind of I thought it was always kind of a career holdback rather than a you know a springboard. Mm, it was good in the it was good in the Carolines, and afterwards it just became his name, and you know, I don't know. Just look it up. I, I, I don't think it was. I mean, I think after he took Lex Luger's gimmick. <laughs> yeah. I thought Wait, I thought Sean Stacy. I thought Sean Stacy. Sorry. What? That was Mr. Perfect. Yeah, he took Kurt Hennig's gimmick. I, I think that Landell's career was hurt by the drugs and everything. By the way, I, did, I saw Landell. He was on the um, Ohio Valley show on January, whatever is the Christmas Chaos show, that they the redone Christmas Chaos show, January 30th. He looked like Buddy Rose. He was so oh. huge. Really? He was wearing this. Um, he was wearing this orange sweatsuit. Like he didn't wear trunks or anything like that. He wore this orange, you know, like like kind of like a Rey Mysterio thing. You know, like this. What would I call it? What's what's this clothes called exactly? Jumpsuit. Jumpsuit. Yeah, like pretty, more like a prison outfit, more yeah. than a jumpsuit even. Yeah, he's wearing like this prison outfit lo looking thing that's orange, and and he's just huge. Like a giant I mean, pumpkin. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he reminded me of um. Did you ever see? Did either guys you ever see the zebra kid? Not the zebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the zebra kid, the guy from um. Uh, what was this? George Bolas, who was like a 400-pound guy that was like an amateur champion that went into pro and was actually a really big star in the, probably the 50s. You know, who just looked like this masked pumpkin. You know, like because he was like like round and and all that. And that's what Buddy Landell looked like, except he had blonde hair. Huh. Anyway. So there's little chance of him getting that developmental deal. <laughs> <laughs> not at not at 40. <laughs> that's all I got, guys. Appreciate the time. Okay. Uh, let's go you to know what's John. pathetic? Speaking of the uh, okay. licensing yes. up here in Washington, yeah. I heard today that um, apparently the Washington State Licensing Department is going to do an investigation for every wrestler in the state because wrestlers have been falsifying their uh, their paperwork. Uh, what and a it's shock. like, you really have to falsify paperwork? You can't go get a physical? <laughs> it's not like they're giving you an AIDS test or a hepatitis test. They do that hit your knee with the hammer thing and the eye test, and you have to falsify that. That's so pathetic. Yeah. Hey, I'm still reeling from, Jer from Jersey. <laughs> That's right. Man, all I was going to do was judge, and, you know, the only... <laughs> by the way, and by the way... you had to get, like, the EKG and everything. I didn't really get that stuff. I had to get an EKG. I know. I, I, was, I was thinking, like, you know, if I was, like, fighting, I would say, this is, this is fine, this is good, the, you know, everything... But like sitting there to judge and have a blood test and an EKG and all that, I was thinking like, you know, it was like a running, it was like a running joke there. And then, and then I got it all. And then you know they had that technicality because the doctor hadn't signed the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So they didn't let me. They didn't let me judge. It's unbelievable. By the way, by the way, I got the word from a UFC that they will never let me judge because oh. they have decided. Yeah, they have decided that uh, they don't want reporters judging. I, I don't blame them. You know, that was just a decision. It had nothing so to do with me. No, 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 no. This thing was not me in particular, no. Okay. But, but the, the, the thing in Jersey wasn't me in particular, but, but, 
I was basically invited by the commission to judge because of they were un, they were trying to make it up to me for the idea of you know based on what happened they were sorry about it it was like you know a bunch of you know it was total silliness why but it was they were all just following regulations and then UFC was just like you know what it's probably not a good idea since you're actually going to be covering the show to be judging on the show and you know what they're right I mean if I actually wasn't going to write on the show it's one thing but the bottom line is is that I was going to write on the show so I shouldn't be judging mm -hmm. okay uh, let's now we can go to John Gabe how you doing doing really good let me ask you a question here. My friend was on the Internet. He read your website, and said, you said that WCW is going to be dying. I didn't How do say you know they were the going deal's to be not dying. done yet, I and didn't... everybody's keeping it quiet? I didn't say that it was going to be dying. I said that everybody should prepare for the, the, the fact that there may be a time that this company is not around, and there is a possibility that if this if the sale does not go through there is a strong possibility that the company will not exist if the sale goes through it will exist for a while but how, and, how, how do you know it didn't already go through and everybody's keeping it quiet the, no. there, oh there's a possibility but the point is that I was trying to make is even if the sale went through you better prepare just like with ECW because it was thing has with a cokehead what does that have to do that it didn't make money that had nothing to do with it the he fact that the company knows the company, the company lost money. I know. Not the company right, lost. The company, Paulie lost. Paulie, the ECW lost two and a half million dollars, which is basically what WCW loses in two weeks. And the point is, is that Time Warner might be able to absolve those losses, but those kind of losses every two weeks, sooner or later, I'm saying like if they cannot turn it around, this company losing that kind of money that quickly is not going to be around for. Is not going to be around forever. They need to turn it around. Do you think ever can turn it around? Do I think he can? I think the odds are against him. I hope he does. I hope greatly that he does. But the well, odds, I would say, certainly the odds are, are against him. Do, do you think that Vince Russo was sent there to ruin it and lose all that money for them? No, I don't think that. Why, do you, why don't you think that? Why does all wrestlers think that? There are wrestlers who think that, but... And it's not I, all know, of them, but there are. Nah, I don't even think the majority do. I mean, I think that people kind of do that with their conspiracy theories and everything. You know... I don't rule out because it's Vince McMahon the possibility that that's true, but it's one of those things where I, I really don't believe it. You know, I really don't. Any reason? Just the reactions of everyone. Just the reactions of Russo. I don't think Russo's a good enough actor to have pulled it off to this degree, to, to pull it off like that. But and, you don't and, think and, he tried and, to get and, all the things, pop? And Russo did. You know, for to 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 Russo really tried. I mean, I can't ever take the way that Russo worked really really hard and he really tried. It's just that. His idea of what would work didn't work. I mean, why, miserably didn't work. Why would he go out and bash at the beach and screw somebody that he couldn't get away with screwing? Where's Russo now? He's done. He's finished. He's in a video store somewhere selling videos because he fucked with a. We don't even know where. We don't even know where he is. I don't know where he's. Why would he do that? I think he thought that he was going to outmaneuver Hogan. And he, I mean, yeah, he, 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 he wasn't fired the next day. He left. That's right. I, which is amazing. That's a miracle too. <laughs> how that ever happened? I, that's the one I still haven't figured out. Is how come Siegel didn't just go? You know, hey, uh, you're you're out of your mind. <laughs> so go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead, he sided with well Siegel. Siegel made a lot of bad decisions. What can I say? Because he didn't know how to run a wrestling company. He knew nothing about wrestling whatsoever, and you cannot have someone running a wrestling company who knows nothing about wrestling. I think we've learned that rule over 13 years of WCW. We've got to hit a break, okay? Yeah. Is M.I. Smooth the same guy who was Ice Train a few years back? Yes, he is. And also says, I agree that Stasiak and, uh, it's that, sta that being with Stasiak is very bad for Stacy. Uh, what was the most bought pay-per-view ever? That would have been last year's WrestleMania. I think it was 824,000 buys, so that's the number to shoot for for this year. And... I don't know if they'll get it or not. Do you think they'll get it? I would guess that they won't. Yes. I think it'll be real close. I think it'll be in the neighborhood. I think it's touch and go if they can beat it. Uh, this is from John Popa, who says, You've always said that McMahon took over Georgia Wrestling in 1984, that Vince offered the, the top guys contracts, and a couple of guys took the offer. Who were those guys? The only one I remember was the Spoiler and maybe Bill Eadie. Actually, Bill Eadie was already there. I know the spoiler, Don Jardine went, and I know Les Thornton went, and I think there might have been like one or two others. There were only, there were very few that went, though. Um, the rest of them all stayed with the NWA um, at that time. Uh, I don't know if you've mentioned it, but I was wondering how Paul Orndorff was doing since he took that bump in the ring during his uh, return to WCW. He ended up being, you know, okay the next day, but uh, they wouldn't put him back in the ring. 
Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm a long. This is from Brian Deffenbaugh, who goes on a long time WF fan to a lesser extent a WCW fan. Recently, the staleness of the WF storylines has pushed me to become more interested in WCW. Am I wrong, or would the return of Steve Austin and Undertaker have the roles of Jericho and Benoit, despite having outstanding matches, um, diminished? Yeah, Jericho definitely. With all the WF talent and the rumors of more set to join, are the guys going to slip further down the cracks? I uh, do not know the answer to that because there's also a movement to push them right now, as you can see. Uh, they'll probably stay in the same, they'll probably stay at the same level realistically. As far as the main eventers, Rock and Triple H are outstanding. Angle is really good, but I hate to say it, I'm tired of Stone Cold. I enjoyed the WF more in his absence. With a WrestleMania match pending with him and Rock, I find myself debating whether to purchase the pay-per-view. The Royal Rumble was predictable, setting up the, the Austin main event. I'm just wondering if I'm the only person tired of the devastating stomach kick followed by the stunner. It's growingly eerily reminiscent of the boots of the face and the leg drop. Uh, concerning WCW, I hope the sale goes through soon. Fusion has a grand opportunity to catch the WWF in a downward trend. Landstorm, Mike Awesome, Scott Steiner, Palumbo, Ginger, and O'Hare combined with some possible ECW additions can make for a fine centerpiece, however. Ho hopefully, Hogan will not make his presence felt. That would be a death knell for the company. Basically, if they got rid of Steiner, Rick Steiner, Lex Luger, and Nash, I, find, oh, I would find the company refreshing, even if it's still confusing. Uh, let's see, a couple of comments from someone who goes, I like the first hour of Nitro. Regarding the Medeja thing, why didn't somebody just ask Medeja who attacked her? Because <laughs> I thought St I think Stasiak is a decent worker. At least he tries. He does try, but he's terrible. Uh, I thought Raw was very, very good. I Rock could try to play football. Yeah. Brock and Angle was probably the best match on free TV this year. Uh, God, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, Austin and um, Austin and Angle had a really good television match. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, Rock and Angle was at. Rock and Angle didn't. Rock, when was Rock last Rock and Angle match on SmackDown? Because they've had some really good ones, but uh, it could have been. I mean, it was it was great. He goes, I think Lawler is better than Heyman, but I can see where you would say Heyman is better. The product yesterday would have made anyone look decent. I think that anybody could have made that show look good. Uh, finally, what are they going to do with Kurt Angle for WrestleMania? We talked about it. Maybe Benoit, but whoever it'll be, I have a feeling we'll have a pretty good idea after tonight. It's from Carlo Padula, who goes, Luthez said on the law, in fact, he said it here, and, uh, that he beat Bruno in Toronto. Did he really pin him? What did he mean? They had a match in Toronto, and Luthez won the match. It was a worked professional wrestling match. Uh, let's see. What was WCW thinking when they put Lex Luger in a singles match at 9 o'clock? Poor Booker T, they'll probably blame him for the ratings. And who was the genius that thought Rick Steiner could draw as a main eventer? Well, nobody can. Although, I guess he probably is worse. Um, uh, some Kevin Nash stuff that we've already talked about. <laughs> I think, this is from Ed, who goes, I think I'll quote someone that something, since someone said to me about the Stasiak DC Keebler angle. I knew it couldn't have been Stasiak's baby. His sperm doesn't have enough charisma. <laughs> Oh, uh, do you think the WWF would buy WCW if the current deal falls through? I think they can't because of the um, the uh, what's it, the Viacom deal. They have Viacom when they bought their programming, bought exclusivity of WWF programming, and the WWF they made a deal with WWF when WWF was trying to buy it that they would allow them to go on the Turner Networks if they paid them a certain amount, or whatever the amount was was way more than Vince wanted to pay, and that's when Vince backed off of um, the negotiations. Uh, let's see. Um, this is someone who says, Kaz Hayashi was either the star of Nitro. He's incredible. But And another person who says, Yang is not awesome. Uh, let's see. APW versus UPW. I was wondering, Dave, how often do you get to see either of these companies? And if you do get to see them, just how good could some of the guys be? If they were working a full-time schedule, in other words, how much potential do some of the guys have? I mean, Modest and Daniels are very good. Um, some of the other guys, um, Donovan Morgan, Tony Jones, um, those guys... If they worked regularly, could probably be pretty good. I mean, they're, 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 Donovan Morgan's good for his level of, you know, for the independent, independent level. He's a hard working guy. Uh, Prototype's got tremendous potential. He is not a good worker now. I'm trying to think of some of the other guys there. I've only seen the, the UPW guys once. Mikey Henderson was, you know, very, very good. Um, most of the rest of them, um, I mean, I saw there were short matches. And none of them, I mean, none of them really stood out as workers. Some of them had very good bodies. Sakota had a good body. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? The, the really tall guy. I didn't even see Russell. Nathan Jones, I think his name. 
the, the, you know, God, that guy's huge. He's, like, bigger than Nash. Uh, what do you think about RBD joining the WWF? I don't think it's going to happen, but, it, and it, you know, he's going to have to go somewhere. Uh, let's see. Um, you can have more than just barbed wire and fire pro D. You can have regular octagon, eight and six man tags. It's a great game and captures everything. Let's go to uh, Dave in St. Louis. Dave, what's going on? Yeah, uh, as good as that main event was on Raw last night, um, uh, I think Deborah sort of ruined it when she no sold that ankle. <laughs> that was. Oh yeah. And, you know uh, what else not, ruined it? It makes me worry for the main event. You know. It you know what else ruined it when when when, I, when you think about that ankle thing is like, I wouldn't have thought about it. So I don't blame the writers, but when I saw it, it just stuck in my head. And that was when Angle had her in the ankle lock. Her ankle is so tiny yeah, that it was almost like if that movement, and, and, you know what I mean? If you're going to get it over that he broke Scotty Tuhati's ankle and that it's a threat to the rock, that, you know, 105-pound woman with that tiny ankle who's the age that she is, I mean, yeah, I don't I guess for drama you have to have it on, but it was just like that thing... The idea that he didn't break her ankle and that she didn't sell it was was actually really bad. I, I mean, she, she should have been like right grabbing up. for the she ankle right out on the mat. Right. I guess she didn't, want, you know, her skirt. She didn't want to hike up or something. I, I, I just, I just was really kind of upset. I mean, I think The Rock did a great job, but um, you know, I mean, the only redeeming quality I guess was when Austin did come to the ring. He just told her to get out of the way, and then he left without even checking on her or anything. I guess, yeah. I guess he knew that she, you know. She wasn't <laughs> really uh, affected by Kurt Angle, but uh, you know, as much as I like Kurt Angle, it just upsets me that uh, you know all well, that was the hard work just kind of uh, that The Rock and and them did just she took away from it. Yeah, know? but you know, I mean, from from a from a storyline standpoint of where they were going, I thought it was a real clever way to get to you know Austin attacking The Rock, you know, for the first attack, you know, because it was. It, you know, you know, he he did say if anything happens to her, I'm going to hold you responsible. And then when he did the run in, I mean, I knew he was going to nail Rock, but I mean, it was I just thought it was a clever way rather than like, you know, like a more traditional way. And so she had to be the pawn in in getting there. I I saw that, but that one spot that you talked about, yeah, when that spot was going on, I'm going like, oh my God, you know, it's just like that ankle that that ankle's too small, and it's just not it just it visually it visually just didn't look right that he didn't hurt her. Right away, on yeah. that spot. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, it, w it would have added a lot if she was, you know, carried out, you know, and. You, you know, know what? That's if they would have done that. That's a good point there because if they would have done that, and then that was the way to just get rid of her, and then she was just, and she's not around at WrestleMania, and they've used her for that one spot, and then it's, and then like, you know, like Rock can be mad, you know, they can be mad at each other. You know, because yeah, but if Rock they would have done that protect... last night, you would have had to have Austin right there by the stretcher, acting totally concerned and out of character, yeah. and that would have killed him. Yeah, you're right. But they could they could do a thing where where they just say that Deborah was in the building. Okay. Oh, that he wasn't in the building, and then that happened. Yeah. And then comes back, and then comes back the next show, yeah, and, like and goes after Rock. If he were if he were kicked out of the building, or if he left, or something like that, and it happened in the main event, and then he come back Monday, and he was pissed. That's good. That's good. You know what? I like I like that too. But but I think in the whole thing, um, again, it, it'd be better if they just got Deborah out of this storyline before WrestleMania. Or just put her on crutches. You know. I, I don't. Yeah, but on crutches, she's got to hit someone with a crutch at WrestleMania. I don't want that to happen either. She might yeah. miss. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. You know, I do like uh, Hunter versus The Undertaker, uh, only because it'll actually be interesting to see which one of them does the job. You know. Undertaker. Undertaker. Yeah. Undertaker. I yeah. think. I mean, if, 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 put it this way, if Hunter doesn't win, I'm totally baffled because Hunter really should win. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if he beat Austin and then loses to Undertaker, why did they ever have him beat Austin? That, that would be, that'd be like, make no sense at all. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's okay. Undertaker should be able to, you know, I think one of the reasons they're doing this match because the, the storyline setup is, is that Hunter's beating everyone in the WWF but Undertaker. So he yeah. kind of Undertaker kind of owes him because everyone else had to put him over. Do you think they'll like uh, you know do a Hell in a Cell or add a gimmick to it? You think? Oh, uh, Hell in a Cell would be bad. Yeah, um, Hunter would have to take the bump, and he's not gonna. Yeah, they they don't they got enough on this card, you know that they don't need to be, they don't need to do it. They I mean they may 
They yeah. may do, you know, something with like a no G. They may throw in a no GQ so, you know, Hunter can do something really bad and, and not, and, and explain the win. Or maybe they'll just, uh, stick, uh, the whole McMahon family in a cage with, uh, Trish and everyone. Uh, in an octagon cage and then Vince can make them all submit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was good to see, to see Shane McMahon back only because, you know, it just put an end to some of the, ridiculous stuff going on with uh, Vince and Trish. Uh, I hope it did. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not just the beginning. <laughs> I know. Shit. You know, it'd be nice if Shane worked out a little bit more, though. You know, he, he didn't look too, uh, you know. He didn't look svelte. Yeah. Well, and, uh, he's, got, he's got things that he's doing. You know, whatever they are, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, and as as for WCW, uh, you know, I I kind of uh, agree that uh, I don't see too much hope in in their company. I hope there's something. I hope that they, you know, I hope I really hope. But um, again, like, you know, you know, you got to show me. And right yeah. now, certainly, you know, this is all lame duck stuff. And and if anyone had like a really good idea, they sh certainly shouldn't be doing it now anyway because they'd be wasting it. Yeah. So maybe it's not good to judge it on this. But again, you know, I got I got to see it because I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I saw in an interview, uh, DDP said that, uh, you know, Vince McMahon ought to, you know, thank, uh, Eric Bischoff or send him a check for, uh, helping the resurgence in, in wrestling. And, uh, I actually think the one to thank is, uh, the one, uh, you know, now getting a check from the WWF, and that's Paul Heyman. All of them. Bischoff, Bischoff played a big role in this. But actually, the guy, you know, he sent the check to Turner, which, somehow I don't think Vince is sending that check right now. But, but, but the, um, the, the Bischoff, the Bischoff move of putting Raw, cause I, you know, I remember when it happened, and everyone was very skeptical of it, of, of going to Turner and getting Turner to agree with it, that was a real ballsy move, because if it didn't work, I mean, Bischoff, Bischoff set himself up to be what Vince McMahon is in football, easily, by his, what he, what he did, uh, but with that Nitro and what he was saying before that Nitro, and he did pull it off for a while, um, and then, you know, and then he didn't. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. Well, but, but that was, you know, that was the revitalization of the business. I mean, up, you know, late 95, this, this was dead business. No one was making money. I mean, you know, Randy Hales used to go on that Memphis TV and go, we're the only company in the country making a profit, and which was true. So, I mean, you know, they, they that Monday Night War totally revitalized the, the business. So when Paige said that, I mean, I agree, I agree with that. I mean, but Heyman, Heyman with the attitude and with... The appealing to the male, 12 to 24, you know, and all that. Um, I think no doubt that that was a that was a big deal with for both, because WCW and WF both copied it and both made a lot of money copying. Maybe it. Maybe Randy yeah, Hales so. can save WCW. <laughs> <laughs> Four people on that Fire Pro Wrestling D. I just got the game yesterday. The first thing I did was put Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, and Chris Benoit in a light bulb match against China Billy Gunn and Vince McMahon. The ring is surrounded in barbed wire and there are fluorescent light bulb tubes in the corner for use as weapons. I felt cleansed. Currently playing Steve Austin against Goldberg in an electrified steel cage. Next match, 4-1, Vader Abdul, the Butcher, Rob Van Dam, and Sabu against Kevin Nash. Nash actually works in this game. It's amazing. Friends were over yesterday, and they said, hmm, he did that move in 94 and not since. He did that one in 96 and not since. Hmm, he never did that move before. Uh, let's see. Uh, bu -bu 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 we're on Raw. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. The light heavyweight division dead in WWF? Kind of. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think it would be a huge positive for WCW if they would sign Jerry Lawler, not just in commentating, but with his wrestling mind. If he could get involved with storylines and booking, perhaps he could help provide some needed direction. Uh, I think that's a good idea. I really do. This is from Scott Foyer, who says that Buddy Landell was in the Mid-South before the Carolinas. Also, on a question earlier, this is from Robert Bahari, who says that in December 25th, 1979, Sangre India died at Arena Coliseo. I thought it was Arena Mexico, but you're probably right. After missing a tope, and he went into shock at the age of 23, the Mexican wrestler Torbellino missed a dive on a CMLL Japan tour in 1997 and was paralyzed for the waist down. So that was the other wrestler that I was thinking about. Uh, okay. Let's go to John in Chicago. John, what's going on? Hey, Dave. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, hey. I, was, uh, I don't know if you covered this or not. What did you think of Regal uh, last night? I thought he oh, was oh, I, I love I love him. The I mean, black eye really gave him like a weird, like kind of insane. 
disaffected look or something like that. It was kind of, I was just laughing when he's looking at um, Jericho, that Jericho RTC match on the, the monitor there. He he looks really, <laughs> I don't know, constipated or something. Appalled. <laughs> He uh, he really is. He he was. I mean, I guess it's kind of like when 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 Angle was um, um, doing his stuff um, as far as his comedy stuff um, uh, last year. The thing about Regal with his comedy though is it's. I mean, when Angle did it, it was mm. like he came off as a goofball. Right. And Regal's just what he does is funny, but it's not that stupid funny. Yeah, yeah. It's more like. Um, I guess like authority kind of, kind of like I guess how Vince, well, well, how Stone Cold used to get uh, Vince, you know, on on certain stuff. Yeah, it was funny because he was over the top. Right. <laughs> um, I I have some questions, Dave. About um, I, I noticed on your on the website there as far as the response to Phil Mushnick's uh, Sunday column, mm -hmm. and y you were saying in one of the responses there that Phil was not. Um, was not equating um, stuff, you know, WWF as far as you know being a, a cause of the shootings or being a cause for the desensitize, you know. No, 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 no. He did for desensitizing, but not for the shootings. Okay, but um, I mean, I mean, I think I mean he he grouped in all entertain he, he groups in all entertainment when he writes those things. Okay, um, well, well, that's one thing I'm I'm wondering about is if he rips on all entertainment, why is he in the sports section? Why isn't he a media? Well, it's sports, sports and entertainment both. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was the very next day. He wrote something uh, very similar about uh, was I think it was college basketball on CBS and some of the commercials that aired. And you know, I personally don't agree with this point, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's you know it's a consistent point, right? You know, um, but the thing is, I do think he he kind of implies it in that column there because if you look and I, you, you know if you look in the column he put. He talks about first, you know, last week with Monday Night Raw, basically, it's kind of like a Pied Piper relationship. He's saying, you know, Vince does something, the boys in the audience respond, you know. Yeah. And then he puts in, then he puts in the incident there as far as with the shooting there. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, you know, he's implying this stuff in there. No, what he, what he said as far as the, the shooting, mm -hmm. and his point of, as, and I, I read the thing over and over, believe me, because I'm trying to find out what am I missing that everyone's getting so mad about, and what he said was, what the, the whole the whole deal with the shooting right. is is that, I'm trying to remember the point now. <laughs> no, no, I understand. He, he says, he openly states, why are they, you know, being desensitized to stuff like that? Why, why are they being desensitized? And then he said, I, and he said because, all of this stuff is in entertainment mm -hmm. that kids watch, and right. why is it in why is it entertainment that kids watch? And then people will defend that entertainment, saying, "Well, it's up to the parents." And his whole point is, is that okay? A parent can monitor her children, the children, but he can't monitor everyone's children. And my children have to live in the world with those other children whose well, parents are not monitoring them. So that basically, what he was trying to do is say that that excuse for for Vince McMahon and for all forms of entertainment that, that use that excuse, he's trying to knock down that excuse. Now, you can agree or disagree, but that's where he brought, that's, that was the whole point of the shooting. Okay, okay, but I, you know what, I, I, I understand, you know, he doesn't openly state that and everything. Um, but, 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 I mean, but, I mean, the same thing, it's like the next day, he wrote the same thing about college basketball. Mm -hmm. He did not say that college basketball caused the shooting. Right. Okay, and, and and again, you know, it's like, okay, so so did he say college basketball caused the shooting? Because in one paragraph he was talking about that, and the next paragraph he was talking about college basketball. You could use that same logic and say, yes, he's, he blamed college basketball for it, except he didn't say that there either. And he certainly, I mean, he blamed, put the, they're each in a column. Right. Um, and, I mean, I think his whole point is, is that, is again, is that, that all of these things are being marketed to kids, and oh, we I, live yeah. in a world where, you know, kids are more violent. And whether... That's his point. It's well, not a wrestling you know, point. You, you know, the thing is, people always say this as far as, you know, it's violence and everything like that. But I can also point to statistics, and these are statistics from the Department of Justice saying crime, violent crime has gone down in the last few years as a whole, you know. You're right. You You're know, right. and we can, you know, this is, I think this is my problem with, with, but, with, but, but then I could, then I could say, and again, and, and, and this is certainly not my field. Right. That the, num the number of people, because this is what I've always heard when they say violent crime is down, people go, it's down, but it's up per capita in that the age group that causes the crimes 
because our because our society is skewed older. Right. That actually within an age group that caused the crime, they're causing more crimes than ever before. And like there's more teenagers causing crimes, it's just that there's less teenagers as a percentage of society as before. And again, that's what I've heard. I don't know this. This is not my field that I know at all. Right. I think that part of it also is because um, my grandma used, you know, I think all grandparents do this thing mm -hmm. like, you know, there's so many shootings nowadays. This stuff didn't happen when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. And it's like the thing now is there's so much media. I mean, and there's so many more you people. Go, you're bombarded with right. the TV news, there's CNN, there's CNNSI, there's the internet, there's but, newspapers, magazines, and when something happens, everyone knows about it. Everybody. Yeah. And, and again, again, there's more people. When you have 280 million people in society as opposed to, say, 150, right. theoretically, there should be double the number of crimes, but you right? Know what, you know what? The, 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 uh, if I'll, I'll make real two quick points here the, um, as far as why I, I don't buy a lot of his argument. Uh, okay. First, you can, as a parent, um, put limits on what your children are watching. Also, he, he's saying, you know, well, you know, other children. What about their parents? What about you know other children? Or, or kids, or, or kids, or kids without parents. Right, but I, you know, if you're if if your parents are strong in your life, you know, and you you um, as far as you know, whether it be religious education or you know just family values, you know, you can at least teach your kids to you know at least know what's right and what's wrong, you know, in, in, as far as their point of view, you know. Absolutely. But, but, again, but his not... point is the other, the other children, well, the other you know, parents. But that's life. That's life. I mean, a lot well, of I mean, it... But I mean, I mean, I think that's, that's the, I think his point is, is that because that's life, again, and, and again, it's, I, I hate to speak for him because I don't agree with everything right. he says, but because that's life, maybe this stuff should not be aired on a show where we know there's a huge kids audience and i think that is oh, I, I think I, it's a real I, valid you know, point that the the the, 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 the trish thing a week ago monday you know what i, I should not know. have aired when everyone knows that there are so many kids under the age of 11 watching oh, i think it, that and, and obviously tsn and sky sports felt the same way cuz they didn't air it right right and the other thing it's ridiculous for them to put a tv 14 rating on there when they know that's coming up you know I mean, as far as them being a responsible broadcaster. Well, they they, they they do they do put that. Um, it, it should have been, you know. I'm, I'm just saying. They, they but the TV rating's not going to, you know, they yeah, can put TV. What does that rating really what, do? Right. Like that, well, no one understands those ratings. I mean, that's a nice or, thing. Or, but, do, but, or do what Survivor did with the pig thing. You know, at least flash something up there. You know, saying you know that something this scene is going to be you know. Kind you know for mature people only. Of course, you know this is WWF and TNN, but we should, you know, be holding them to that standard. The uh, other quick point I just want to make is, as far as with Phil, I just think sometimes he wants to be. I don't think he's for censorship, but I think he likes being a censor. You know, as far as, well, you know, if he if he doesn't like seeing this stuff, why is he why is he talking about it all the time? Why is he? Because it's, it's, it's part of it's 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 part of it's yeah, part but society. He, it, but he, I, the, I've seen other critics; they'll comment on the WWF once in a while, you know. But the, it seems like he kind of feeds into the hype machine with it, inadvertently, you know, by promoting their product by saying, "Well, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad." He's telling us, "Oh, this is bad. This is bad." Aren't you indirectly also help you know helping promote? Oh, I've got to check this out, you know. And everything, you per, know, because... per, per, perhaps. I mean, there's an argument, but you know, where that argument, I mean, and there, there's an argument that 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 all those things fueled that first XFL rating, right? But but ultimately, by that same token, you know, when they were all happy, that look at all this negative publicity and look at our TV rating. But then, you know, three weeks later, you know, they were cultivating that negative publicity for that reason. Then ultimately, then three weeks later, when the ratings were bad, they were blaming those same people that they were going like. Haha, <laughs> they're so stupid that they're the ones who are fueling our rating. You know what I mean? Right. And now they're begging those people. Now they're begging those same people for publicity last night. But it, you know, it just—it seems like that they're—they're they're just, you know, it seems like he—it seems like that he—he's more—he's more telling us that this is wrong. He's being, you know, more of, you know, like I—I I don't want to say moral authority or you know something. No, like he's that. very, very—he's uh, very, very opinionated. There's no question. In, in all endeavors, not just pro wrestling, if you read right. his column. Right. And it's like, you know, and, and my whole point on Phil Mushnick is, is that you read his column, read what he says, and don't jump to, like, he didn't actually say this, but I know he meant it even though he didn't say it. Read what he said. Some points he's right and some points he's wrong, and judge his yeah. arguments yeah. by his points. Don't judge his arguments by, 
This is Phil Mushnick, and even though he's right, he's wrong because he's Phil Mushnick. Sometimes he's right, sometimes he's dead wrong. Sometimes right. he's dead right, dead on right. Just like, just and, like everybody. Just like everybody. Just like it. That's right. Just like everybody. Well, I'm wrestling. my call, Dave. Okay. You're very welcome. Let's go to Tom in Texas. Hey, Dave. Hey, what's going on? Dave, I just wanted to uh, concur with you. I think uh, Paul Heyman in the broadcast uh, position is a breath of fresh air compared to uh, Jerry Lawler. I didn't really, you, you don't really realize, you know, until Lawler is gone, how much, you know, how grating his his persona was on that TV show. And I just, uh, and I really like, I, I, I sense a, what, some legitimate heat between, because uh, uh, you know, uh, Jim Ross and uh, and Lawler are friends, and I, I kind of like the dynamic that he doesn't really like <laughs> Heyman at all. And I really like uh, Jim Ross uh, told uh, uh, Heyman to to shut up, and, and Heyman said, "No, I'm not going to shut up." I think as the week <laughs> go by, Heyman's going to have a, a lot more confidence in terms of speaking up, and I think it's a it's a real refreshing change from uh, from Lawler. I, I like Lawler a lot, but I enjoyed Heyman more last night, and and I thought it was funnier. Some of the things because you know with Lawler is a lot of the Raw, Lawler Ross stuff had gotten predictable, right? And, and like like you know where they're going to knock each other. Whereas with Heyman, it's new. I mean, there were like times where I wasn't expecting some, someone to say something, and then like, and uh, like when, when Jim Ross was talking about the Jim Ross said like you know the XFL has had some problems, and, and, and Paul Heyman like rolled his eyes, <laughs> 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 like you bet it's that problem. <laughs> and then, um, and I like the uh, when Heyman said, like, uh, he, he, you know what it's like to have when talking about um, Kurt Angle's defeat. It's like you know what it's like to have like, you know, uh, the world that you know at, at your feet, and then losing it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just don't, hope he doesn't put too many uh, XFL references in every broadcast. He has, you know, I guess. He well, does. I think they, they, I think that there's like sort of a rule that they, they have to talk about it a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. I think, I think they showed too many clips of it last night. Right. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, uh, also, what do you think? Uh, I really, I was really hoping for like, uh, for like some kind of clean pin on, on uh, Hunter at uh, WrestleMania because I can't remember the last time this is somebody Hunter said. Hunter get pin. What? You mean pin? Hunter win by pin or Hunter lose by no, pin? No, Hunter losing by like a clean pin. When's the last time this guy's had a clean pin on him? Uh, clean? Yeah. Boy. Like, it's like the Hulk Hogan of uh, never. clean, I don't remember. I mean, we've had like the outside interference where he's lost, you know, yeah. where, you know and all that, but clean? Uh, I, I don't know, but I don't. But this way, I wouldn't, I, I really think it would be a mistake to do it on this show because to me, I mean, I mean, if, if 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 Undertaker jobs to Hunter, then he's gonna. I mean, where does he go from there? He'll be like, you know, I well, understand. I mean, the, I, mean I, I, I understand it's the point of like older wrestler, you know, wrestlers kind of like put over, put over the younger guys and stuff. But no, it's not even that. It, it's it's like if the big program is going to be Austin and Hunter, being that Hunter has just beaten Austin, he certainly shouldn't lose to Undertaker and then be challenging Austin for the title. That makes no sense. Yeah. Unless Hunter's going to win the title and then Hunter's going to wrestle Undertaker again. Then it would make sense. The only problem is, is I don't want to see that. If Hunter wins the title, I don't, I, I don't want to see Undertaker in that mix. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. One last point. I was wondering with, with that China, uh, almost definitely beating. Um, I don't even know her name. Uh, Ivory, Ivory. Uh, at the uh, at WrestleMania. Um, you know, her whole knock was, well, you know, I don't need the the women's title and stuff. But I would think. You know, a possible scenario where, you know, maybe she would beat Ivory or something and just, like, give her back the belt or something. I'm just thinking, like, if they would have her go against, like, Jericho or, that, oh, like, what a mistake that Not would again. be. And I would think that, that you know, I hate her as a wrestler. And I think the only other program they could have with her, like, if she would beat Ivory, would be to go against uh, Lita. You know, and like it could be like you I know, don't like she I mean, could be I like the Andre the Giant really, woman championship. Boy, that's 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 going to be bad. It'd be bad in the ring, and then it's also going to be bad because I don't think China can you know handle the fact that Lita would probably be more of a baby face than her. Hmm. Unless it's programmed di differently. Um, I mean, that's that's what they got um, Lisa Marie Verone being trained for as a possible future opponent for China. Yeah, but uh, yeah, God, I hope that they don't uh, have her wrestle guys again because that you know. It, it, it makes the guys look really bad. Anyway, take it easy. Okay. I want to thank you very much. Okay, we are totally out of time right now. I want to thank everyone for calling in, sending in emails. And uh, we will be back with Jeff Merrick tomorrow at 5.